Abacus Super Pascal for the Commodore 128. While your classmates are using their Commodore 64s with Abacus Super Pascal to do their homework, and they're probably most likely pretty happy with it, uh, but you, you got a Commodore 128 for your birthday and picked up the 128 version of Abacus Super Pascal. And boy, are your classmates going to be jealous once they see this thing in action. Like this version of Pascal, I'm going to continue where I left off with a C64 version of this video. Feel free to pause this and go watch that video. If I gloss over something that doesn't quite make sense, I most likely covered it in that video. And I don't really want to do basically the same video twice except for the Commodore 128. I really want to continue where we left off and explore what makes this version unique and, to be honest with you, quite awesome. So let's get started. We're going to put the Pascal disk in drive 8. Now it's not an auto booting disk, so we have to press shift run stop to start it. So I'm making this video, of course, on an emulator running a Commodore N28 with two 1571 disk drives. The emulator is, of course, Vice. The first thing you're going to see is this installation of Super Pascal screen. We're not actually installing anything. It just gives us a quick chance to set some options. So let's review some of these options by pressing A to set all of them. So the clock, we don't really care about it, but if you want to use the clock and put the time in, go for it. I'm just going to hit S to start the clock. This lets us change the background and foreground colors. I think the white on blue is really quite nice. Unlike the 64 version where it was like white on green, it was kind of a little burnful on my eyes. This looks really good. So we're going to quit out of this. We're going to set it to slow mode, which is what it defaults to. This will make sense in a few moments when we get into it. And then we're going to press Q. You're going to want to turn the beeping off. If you don't, every time you press enter, you hear that. That will drive you crazy. So definitely hit C to clear that option. Q. We're going to save the configuration. And all that's going to do is save the slow mode, the colors, uh, and the beeping mode. The clock, of course, won't be saved with it. So we're going to press Q and we're going to continue into Pascal. What you're going to see now is the system starting up and copying some files to a drive too. The editor, uh, the compiler, and a file called Lodat, which is kind of like the kernel of the Pascal system. And then unlike the 64 version, the 128 version drops you right in the editor so you can get started not wasting time with being dropped in the utility menu and then having to launch the editor. So this is really, really nice. So let's write a real simple program that runs a nonsensical loop for a few seconds. We're going to press N to start entering our code. The program statement tells the compiler that we're creating a program. Of course we are. And the test is what the output file name is going to be. We're going to declare a variable of type integer. Then we're going to type begin to start the statement section. We're going to assign the variable x to zero. Then we're going to use a repeat loop structure. And then you put the statement that you want to repeat. In our case, it's going to be assign x the value of x plus 1. And then we're going to say do this until x is 5,000. And then our program is going to end. So at this point, we want to save our program. And we're going to use the p command, just like the Commodore 64 version. However, it's a little different. On a 64 version, you'd put a colon and a file name. Here, you just press enter and ask for a file name. We're going to call it s underscore test and again on the commodore 64 and 128 there is no underscore key so the ascii equivalent is the back arrow so you're going to see a lot of back arrows in this but whenever you see a back arrow just think that it's an underscore then it's going to ask us if you want to save it to drive two now let's take a step backwards here for a second if you remember correctly we put two drives in our system zero is drive eight pascal uses a zero based drive system one is drive nine and two is a RAM disk. This version of Pascal gives us a RAM disk and we code there by default. So if we press M to get a directory of the drive, defaults to the RAM disk. And here you can see what we saw when we're booting up, the load app, the editor, the compiler, and now our source code. And there's only three blocks free. It's actually plenty of room to do some coding with, but this is a great place where you're gonna be working on your active code. And then when your code is pretty solid, you can move it to a regular disk for a compilation to a bigger project later. Now in this video, unlike the Commodore 64 video, I'm not gonna edit out any of the disk access times. And our reason why is the 128 version just smokes the 64 version disk IO speed, mainly because we're doing everything in a RAM disk. It does also take advantage of the burst mode of the 1571, but that's irrelevant when you're working with a RAM disk. So we quit out of the editor, we hit C to run a compiler. 
we're going to press an asterisk. An asterisk tells us to use the file name of whatever we were just working with last, which is our RAM disk copy of S back arrow test. It says, do you want to compile this? Yep. And it just pops right up into the compiler. We're going to use default options. And we're immediately compiling. Uh, I'm not going to bother with statistical summary. It links it, and it's ready to run. It is that fast. So now we can run our program. I'll put an asterisk again. It's going to run the program from memory. And this is going to take about five seconds to run. So one, two, three, four, five, six. Yeah, five and change. So that's pretty quick. So let's go back into that program by going to E. We're going to type G to get S back arrow test. So we have our source code back, and we're back. We're going to add one line of code to make this program twice as fast with very little effort. At line 1011, we're going to call a procedure that comes built into this version of Pascal called fast. Yep, that's it. Now our code will run much faster. Oops, let me make this look a little nicer. There we go. So we're gonna use P. And because we loaded file in called S underscore test, we can use asterisk for a file name. It's gonna write it back out. And then with a RAM disk, we can compile this quickly. And we're ready to go. So now we're gonna run this. Now this time, it's gonna go twice as fast. One, two, done. Now you'll notice that the screen cleared while the program was running. So the Commodore 128 can switch its CPU to two megahertz and one megahertz mode. The minor problem with that is the VIC chip that controls the 40 column display can't run faster than a megahertz. So what the Pascal system does is it shuts off the VIC chip. That's why the screen blanks. Your code runs twice as fast in two megahertz mode. And then whenever there's input that needs to be received from the user, it will switch automatically back to slow mode. Now, because our program switched to fast mode and did not switch back to slow mode when it's done, our whole system is gonna operate like that now. So for example, if we go back to the editor, I'm gonna type in E to get to the editor. See how the screen blanked for a moment? And if I type in get S test, you can see it's constantly blanking while we're doing things. If you're gonna use your 40 column mode and you're gonna use the fast mode to do your processing, you should definitely switch to slow mode before you go back to your editor. It will be very annoying to have the screens constantly flashing. Well, when you got this Commodore 128 for your birthday, it also came with a shiny new 80 column monitor. The Commodore 120 has the ability to have both monitors connected simultaneously. So you can have an 80 column monitor and a 40 column monitor working side by side. So let's reboot this machine with the 80 column RGB monitor attached to it as well. Now we have our two monitors attached. We have the 80 com display in the left, which of course is not rendering anything. And we have a 40 com display in the right, which boots into basic as we're, we're used to it doing. There's a few ways you could switch between the screens. We're gonna do it the quote unquote hard way or the hardware way. There's a 40, 80 com button on your keyboard. If you tap that and it'll click, it'll kind of like lock in. It'll toggle us to the 80 column mode. Now, of course, nothing's happened yet. You have to restart the computer. And when you do, it'll see that button's pressed down and it'll default the output to the 80 column display. And then like before, we press shift escape and we'll start booting up the Pascal system. Now in just a moment, you're gonna see the right screen go blank. There it goes. The system has entered fast mode. It's triggering the CPU into two megahertz mode, which as we discussed earlier, disables the VIC chip. So the right side monitor is not even rendering anymore. It's just turned off. So we're gonna press Q to get out of the install. The default options are just fine. And then like earlier, it's gonna load the RAM disk in with the editor, the compiler, and the load dat, which is the Pascal kernel. Excellent. So let's try to get our source code. We'll use a G command. We're gonna type in S underscore or back arrow test and we're gonna get an error. Well, what happened to our code? If I press the M key to get a directory of drive to, you can see that our code is indeed gone. Well, this is a RAM disk. When you reboot a machine or it loses power, that RAM disk gets wiped out, which is why every time we reload Pascal, it recopies those things back into the RAM disk. So when you're working on a project, 
Once you get your code in a pretty good spot, you save it to a regular disk before you're done. Even though this machine has 1571 drives, the RAM disk is still just night and day faster than any disk drive you could throw at it. Let's make a new program and explore some of the features that let us go back and forth between the two monitors and 1480 column mode. So we're going to start a new program and we'll call it program test again. We're going to create a variable to represent a character that we're going to read from the keyboard because we're just going to have a couple points where it pauses for us and we need to be able to store that character somewhere. Uh, we're going to begin our statement section. And the first thing we're going to do is we're going to slow things down to one megahertz mode. And then we're going to use the mode 40 procedure that comes with this version of Pascal to switch the output to the VIC chip on the 40 column display. And then here we can write, you are in 40 column mode, press a key. Okay. And then here we can assign our variable C to get key. All right. So that'll wait for a key to be pressed. The key is pressed. We can now go to mode 80. That will stop rendering to the 40 com display and will write anything else to the 80 com display. So over here, we're going to write, you are now in 80 column slow mode, press a key. And then we'll do the same thing. We'll have it wait for a key press. At this point, we should see output on both monitors. And then we're going to go back to fast mode and then we're going to have our program end. All right, so let's store this. And let's compile this really quickly. Ah, oh, I have a mistake in my code, which is great. So we can see how fast we can get back into the editor. So if we press run stop, because we're in a RAM disk, we're immediately back into our source code and we can correct that error. So we're gonna fix this bug. Clearly this equal does not need to be there. So we're gonna use the P command. We'll use asterisk to resave it. Quit, compile, asterisk, <laughs> enter, enter no summary, and we're ready to go. Just see how fast we can iterate through this code. This is just night and day. So we're gonna run this now and see how it behaves. We went to slow mode, and now we can see text on the right side, and we can you know, interact with the user there. We can press a key, and now you can see we're also outputting text on the 80 column side. But since we're still in slow mode, both screens are still active. The VIC chip is still rendering text, and the VDC chip is rendering our 80 column text. If we press a key now, it ends by going to fast mode, which turns off the VIC chip, and leaves us in 80 column mode. If you want to write an application that can use both screens, you can definitely do it in this version of Pascal, and it's pretty easy. But I think for now, we're going to continue on with our demonstration of this system, just using the 80 column mode. So we're going to write a simple program that's going to resemble a character editor for a D&D inspired game. We're going to have a custom data type that will store the attributes of our character. We'll have a little menu system we'll put together where we can uh, roll a new one, save and load it from disk and view it. Uh, really, really simple. So we're going to press N to make a new program and we're going to call it program car ed. So the compiled output will be car ed or character editor. So we need to create a custom type to represent our character. And we start that with a type section. We're going to call this type car type. And then what we're going to do is we're going to declare what's called a record. A record is like a container of variables that we can use um, that gets assigned to one variable. So in this container, we're going to have a name and you give it a type of string. We're going to have intellect as an integer. And we're just going to include agility, strength, and constitution as integers as well. And you end that record with an end semicolon. All right, so now we're going to declare a variable section and we're going to make a variable and we're going to call it my car and it's going to be of type car type. When you create a variable in Pascal, it does not initialize it with any particular default values. So what happens is it just gets whatever garbage is in memory. So in this case, we want to make a procedure that's going to set all of the fields of our record to a default value. So we're going to call this procedure in it my car and it's just going to simply access each field of the my car record so my car dot string for example and we're going to assign it default values and i'm just going to set all of the ability scores to zero and the program for now is going to call the init my car procedure and then end 
This gives us a pretty good starting point to make sure our code compiles before we move on and creating the menu. So we're going to do a P to save it. We're going to call it S car ed, where the S stands for source. We're going to save it to drive to. And now let's see if this compiles. And I'm just going to tear through the options really fast. Ah, I spelled agility wrong. So let's edit that. Agility. Very good. Now, here's an interesting thing to note. So normally, you'd want to just kind of move your cursor to the bottom to run the next command. There are these cool sequences in a Commodore 128 called escape sequences. And what you can do is you can press the escape key, you press and release it, and then you press another letter on the keyboard to do something. And one of them is delete everything from the cursor to the bottom. Now, if you're an emulator like me, my escape key is mapped to run stop. So instead, we're going to use control left open bracket, and that's the equivalent of pressing escape. So if I press escape and then at sign, it deletes everything from my cursor to the bottom. So then I can just press P and I can save this. Those escape keys also exist in Commodore Basic. They're kind of uh, built into the kernel of the Commodore 128. So you can pretty much use them anywhere. Excellent. So we're going to create another procedure that's going to represent the main menu. So we're going to press N and we're going to call this procedure main menu. We need to declare a variable of type car. That's going to be used when we have the system uh, wait for a menu option. So we'll just do a quick begin here. And we're going to do a repeat loop because we're just going to paint the menu, uh, ask for a button, react to it, and then go back and repaint the menu. And then we start with a right line. CHR147 is going to clear the screen for us. Then we're going to type in choose an option. Then we're going to type in R, roll character. We'll put a shift B here also. And then we'll make options for save, load, view, and quit. We make 1141 look a little bit neater here too by putting the top of our menu in. Okay, we want to grab a key from the keyboard using our get key procedure. And we're going to finish the repeat loop with until C equals a Q. All right, very straightforward. So if you remember, you can't call procedures unless they're defined before where they're called. So we need to move that program block up there to the bottom. And we're going to use the shift numbers command. So we want to move 1105 to 1115. And we're just going to put a really big number so it moves it to the end. All right. And there we go. Our main program's at the end. And we'll even put a little space here so our code is more readable. And then we just need to add a line of code at 1186 to call our main menu. All right, let's just stare at this for a moment. Some pretty nice looking code. Let's see how our program runs. We're going to store it to disk. And then we're going to run it through our compiler. Oh, and then we're going to run it really quick. Ah, so now we have a pretty nice looking menu. Roll character, save character, load character, view character, quit. Press anything I want. It'll repaint the menu. If you press Q, we exit back to the system. So now we're back in the source code for the main menu. And we want to write the code that's going to be the roll character function. And this is going to be a procedure that creates random scores for our ability scores. It's going to show it to the user, and then it's going to ask them for a name based on the scores presented to them. So let's write this code real quick, and I'll explain how it works. So here's our procedure for roll character starts by assigning a random number between 1 and 20 to each of the statistics. Random is a function that gives us a random number between 0 and less than 1. We then multiply that value by 20 to get a number between 0 and 19. And then we add 1 to get a number between 1 and 20. And then we convert that number to an integer so we can put it into our intellect field. And then, of course, we do the same thing for agility, strength, and constitution. We then show those values to the user. 
and then we ask them for a name. They're given a chance to name their character based on the stats that they see. The read ln command waits for the user to type in a name and press enter, and then we assign that value into the mycar.name. So now that we have this procedure created, we need to wire it into our main menu. So let's go take a look at the main menu call and how we're gonna do that. So we're gonna use the F key to find the lines of code where main menu is. So we'll just type in main menu. And we can see it's around 11.05. So we're gonna list 11.05 to, there's a main menu. So we need to add some code that's gonna look at the R key and call that procedure. So we need to insert some code right under the get key here. So I'm gonna use my escape trick from before, escape at sign to delete everything underneath it so I can just start writing code right here. And at 1166, we're gonna use a new decision structure called case. And what case says is we're gonna look at the expression C, which is a character, and then depending on the value of it, we're going to do something with it. So when we see an R, we're gonna call our roll car procedure and then we're gonna end the case section with an end semicolon. And as you can imagine, when we add the other command, we'll just place them under the R. So here we have the same problem. We have our new procedure at the bottom, but we're calling it way above and it needs to be declared before. Let's first do the simple part and we'll just move our main section of code to the bottom here. So we're gonna do an S 1185 to 1200 and we're gonna put it a fictitious line of thousand to get it at the bottom. So now our main code's at the bottom. Ooh, we should probably put a space here to make this a little bit more readable. But our role character is still declared after it's used. Now it's gonna become kind of a pain in the butt to constantly uh, move our procedures around to try to give them the right order. And you can do that. But there's a trick we can use called the forward declare of a procedure. So we're gonna list our program and stop it right about here. And we can see the first procedure we create is at line 1060 of this procedure in it car. All right. What we're going to do is we're going to duplicate this line to be 1161 because we want to put a line of code above it. And we're going to put this line of code above it. And we're going to make our procedure roll car here. And you put the word forward next to it. And what it says is, trust me, compiler, there is a procedure called roll car, but it's declared somewhere in the future. All right. So now if we look at that section of code here, we can see that. So now when we run our code through the compiler, the main menu won't run into a problem because it can't find the roll car procedure. So let's save this and make sure that this compiles and works correctly. Ah, I spelled roll car wrong. So we're gonna hit escape and we're gonna do a find for roll cat because that's where I typed it wrong. Ah, roll chat, there we go. We'll make this roll car. Okay, we're gonna place this out here. And again, it's just so nice that we can run through the compiler so quickly. Excellent, and let's give this a quick run. So we're gonna run this command. We're gonna roll the character. It's gonna show us a one to one, a 13 to 17. Uh, that sounds kind of like a fighter. So let's call him, I don't know, fighter dude. Cool, so we rolled the character. Still can't do anything else with it, but at least we've gotten to that part. So let's queue out of our program and let's continue on in the editor. So here we are with our quit command implemented and our roll character command implemented. The next logical command to implement will be the view character. And this one should take no time at all as there's not a whole lot to it. So once again, we will press N to enter some new code. And we're just gonna create a procedure called view car that will view the character. And again, we're gonna declare a variable to store the character when we wait for a key press. Uh, and it functions pretty straightforward. We're just gonna right line out the information and it looks something like this. And there it is. So once again, we need to move that begin and end dot, the main part of our program to the very bottom. So we'll use a shift line command again. So we're gonna move 1275 to 1290, and we're gonna move it to 5,000, just a line number way ahead of everything else. And now it's at the end, and now we just need to add our forward declaration. So to find those, we can just use our F command, search for the word forward, and there they are. So we'll list uh, 
1050 to 1080. There they are. And we'll just add one of them right here, 1061. And we'll call this procedure view car. And now the full declaration's in place. And the last thing we need to do is add it to the case block. And that looks like it's around 1170 to 1200. There it is. So we'll add 1181, a view. And this will be our view car command. And here we can see we have our view character procedure and we have our begin and block at the end. Uh, and we believe everything's ready to go. So let's save this. Let's run it through the compiler. And let's give it a run. So we control our character. This will be a, another warrior, warrior of justice. And then we'll use our V command to view it. Uh, and there it is. All right, let's quit out of here and let's move on to the next part. Okay, now we're getting down to some interesting parts of the program, saving and loading our character. So let's write the save character routine first. So again, we'll start a new procedure and we're gonna call this save car. And like our other procedures, we will have a C car to store the character we're waiting for. Now here's what gets interesting. We're gonna declare a variable called car file and we're going to, the type is going to be a file of car type. So what does this mean? The way files work in this Pascal is the variable name car file is the actual file name that's going to be used when it writes to disk. The type is file. That's pretty straightforward. But files could only contain a collection of a type of thing. In this case, it's car type. Our car type is our record. Now you can put as many car types as you want into the file, but the only thing you can put into the file is car types. Now, if you want to do something more complicated, you would do a file of string or a file of character, and you would just write, or a file of byte, and you would just write out the data uh, by hand. But this is pretty easy to deal with. So we're going to begin the statement section. This command is called set drive, and it exists in the Commodore 120 version of Pascal. This is not a standard Pascal command, and it sets the drive to two, which in our case is the RAM disk. It actually defaults to zero no matter where you want to program from. So we're going to set ours to the RAM disk. Optionally, we're not going to do this, but you could call the name function. You could pass in car file and give it a different file name than the variable, but we're not going to bother with that. But if you did want to do that, this is how you would do it. So we're going to call a built-in function called rewrite. And we pass in car file. This prepares the file for writing. And then we're going to write to the file, car file, and we're going to send up my car. So now it's written to the file, and then we close car file. All right. And then we're going to write line saved to disk, press any key. All right. C equals get key. And then we'll end this procedure. I'm going to put a little shift space here. So right now we're going to write the load card command right here as well, since the logic is almost identical. So once again, we'll declare a variable C of type character for our character turn. We're going to declare car file as a file of car type, where we're going to read the data back in from. We're going to do a begin. And then we will set the drive to two. And then you're going to call a command called reset and we pass in car file. This is going to prepare the file for reading. It resets the pointer to the beginning of the file. We're gonna read car file into our variable my car. So it's gonna be the content of the file into our variable. We're then going to close it. Okay, we're gonna write line out, read from disk, press any key. We'll grab a key from the keyboard and then that procedure will be done. So once again, we have to move our begin and end block of the program to the bottom. It's between 1340 and 1355. So we're going to shift 1340 to 1355, and we're going to put it at 5000. And now if we list the bottom half of our program, okay, now we need to create our forward declarations. So we're going to do a find for forward. And they're around 1060 and 1065. So we'll just create a 1066. This will be our load character. We will create a 1067. 
and this will be our save character. All right, now we just need to find the case command so we can wire it in. So we're gonna list 1182, I don't know, 1220. There it is. So we're just gonna add in a S to call our save car function and an L to call our load car function. All right, I think I'm gonna add a, a space at 1451 just to kind of break it up a bit. Okay, I think it looks pretty good. Let's save it and give it a try. Okay, we have a small bug to fix at line 1460. We're missing an end quote here, so we'll just sneak that in real quick. All right, let's give this a try. We're gonna run our program. Start. So let's roll a character. Hmm, I guess the random number generator isn't too great in this version, Pascal. I noticed that every time we run our program, we get the same uh, starting stats. Uh, that's a problem for another day. So we'll call this um, our repeat warrior. Okay, we'll view it. That's good. Uh, we will save it to disk with the S command. So it's saved to a RAM disk. And then we're gonna quit. Now if I map drive two, we can see our file there called car file and that has our character in it. So if we run our program now and we view our character, we see that that's the blank character. We're gonna choose L to load it from disk. We're gonna press view and there's our character read in from the disk. So to kind of wrap things up, uh, we'll start with the, the pros. RAM disk. This is really the f core feature of the product. This RAM disk makes this product like a thousand times faster than the 64 version. And it really lets you code, compile, troubleshoot, and kind of do that loop really, really fast. This product also embraces just about everything that the 120 has to offer. Fast and slow mode, 40 com, 80 com, multi-monitor support. Uh, it also supports the 1571's burst mode. While this is not stated in the 64 version of this product, in the 128 manual, it mentions that you can distribute programs that you write with this royalty free on such a startup disk provided that only the runtime in your program is on it, meaning you can't distribute the compiler and the editor, which makes perfect sense. The built-in assembler lets you create software without much limitation, so that pretty much opens up this package to write any kind of software you want, games, uh, music, graphics, whatever you want to do. So on the downside, it doesn't support the RAM expansion out of the box. That would have been a really cool addition. It would have been nice if you could take the RU and carve it up, maybe take 256K and put it aside to the RAM disk, and maybe the other 256K for the heap for your Pascal program. But it's such a small con. The package overall is, is really, really fantastic. Uh, I would have had a lot of fun working on this if, uh, if I uh, known this existed back when I was a kid. But anyway, that's my thoughts on a product. Again, thank you guys so much for viewing. I truly, truly appreciate it. And uh, hopefully we'll have some more content out here for you guys soon. Take care.